Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am your girl Tia Griffin and as you know already, I am your Heal Her Relationship Coach where I'm helping you heal your relationships with God, heal your relationship with yourself, heal your relationship with others as it pertains to healing your father wound, healing the relationship that you have with your father, uh, healing your relationships so that you can date well and date in a healthy way that leads to marriage, and four, heal your relationship with your money. I am your Heal Her Relationship Coach. And if you need any help in any of those areas of your life, please stay tuned. Make sure that you like this video. Leave me a comment. Um, share this video with a friend. And like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you have not done so already, make sure you turn on that post notification bell so that you can be notified every single time I post. So today, we will be talking about what is a father wound. If you've been watching my other videos, I've been really incorporating the father wound into my videos and how to heal it and how a lot of the things that we do as far as relationships, dating, romantic relationships, is due to or directly related to our father wound. But I've never sat down and told you guys what a father wound is, especially from my perspective. Okay, so that is how I want to start this video out. Um, letting you know what a father wound is, I'm going to tell you my story about how I knew I had a father wound and the symptoms of father wounds and then how we heal it. Okay, so I want to start with this quote. And the quote says, the father wound is so deep and so all pervasive in so many parts of the world that healing it could very well be the most radical social reform conceivable. And that is Richard Rohr. Every single social ill we are dealing with is directly and indirectly related to fatherlessness. And that was Pastor Otto Kelly. So, so we look at our world, right? We see all the violence. We see all the gangs. Um, we see how people are doing these things in our world. There are social ills and it can be rooted or it can be traced back to a father wound. Either that person wants to feel um feel accepted that person wants to feel loved that person wants to feel seen that person wants to be noticed or when it comes to gang a person joins a gang because they want to feel like they belong or they want to feel accepted by something these are all signs of a person that has a father wound okay um either trying to prove themselves or prove that they belong to something so a father wound is an experience of being unfairly attacked abused, abandoned, rejected, left without emotional support, protection, provision, presence, praise of a father. It is a living injury or a injury to our living soul that has caused a void, a gap, or an emptiness. So they did a research um, and they asked some young ladies, what are the things that you wish that you had from a father? And she said, protection, provision, presence and praise now for me when i look at my love languages my love languages are time and touch and when i was dating um this one guy i remember that he couldn't take me out to dinner or i think i asked for something or he may have wanted to give me something but he realized that he could not and he became so frustrated with himself like he felt like his his manhood was attacked he felt like um, because he couldn't provide for me, he couldn't be in my life. And that was the furthest from the truth because I never really cared about presents. Like gifts and stuff like that, I've always been more concerned about presents, okay? When my father, when I was younger, my dad bought me a swing set and also a little red car. These are the only two things that I can remember my, my father buying for me. But with the gifts that he gave me, he gave me the gifts, but it was at... I didn't have him in my life. So I didn't have anybody to teach me how to drive my little red car, nor did I have a father to push me on the swing or catch me at the end of it. So I don't know if my desire or dismissal or resistance of gifts came from that experience in my life, but I never really was one for gifts. I was always presence over presence. And it's so funny because Honestly, y'all, I don't even want to marry a guy who, I didn't want to marry a drug dealer. I didn't want to marry somebody in the streets. I didn't want to marry somebody in the military. And I didn't want to marry like a doctor. Why? Because I knew that these things would take him away either um, in death or 
or through his time of always working. And I did not want to experience a life without a male presence in my life ever again, right? So a father wound is an experience of a father hurting you in some way that it affects the soul, affects our soul. And as you know, we live from our soul. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence because from it flows the issues of life, flows the rivers of life, right? So our soul is also, um, another word for it is our heart. So we have to guard our heart. But when our father was not there to protect our heart, we were accessible to so many things. Um, these are just things that I've learned in life as I, I look back on, on my life and God has given me revelation God gave us parents for a reason. He gave us a mother and he gave us a father. And when those two people are in our life, we have better guards over our life, better guards over the doors of our life, better guards over the gates of our life, right? So when a father is absent, it caused my mother to also be absent. Because my father was not around, it caused my mother to have to now fill in for two roles. Now she has to work in order to keep a roof over our head, to make sure that we had clothes on our back, to make sure we had food on our table. So because he was absent, she now had to fill in this role, which caused her to be more absent. And guess what? The very plan of the enemy was able to come into our lives as children why because our parents were not there the guards for our gates the guards for our home was no longer in place because my father was not present and my mother was also absent i was introduced to um sex very early i was introduced to pornography i was introduced to um sexual movies um these are these are um what's the word i'm looking for these are Things that the enemy uses to infiltrate our lives because our guards are not there. It's almost like having all of your treasures in the house and you have doors with no, you have doorways with no doors on them. The enemy can come in and, and wreak havoc. He can come in and rain his terror basically on our lives because our guards were not present. A lot of times you will realize that your life was opened up to um experiencing pornography and masturbation at a young age or even molestation and rape because your your guards your pillars your protective measures that god put in place were not there leaving us susceptible to those that wanted to harm us and also leaving us susceptible to the will and the plan of the enemy right so also with the wound it is almost like having if you've seen like a soul tie right and and when pe two people are ripped apart from each other it's almost like putting two i don't know if you've ever done this but if you take a we did this at a, a conference i went to one time they glued two sheets of paper together and we had to then rip it apart and you can see that in those rips it doesn't rip evenly when the papers are torn apart from each other they are um some pieces of my paper or one paper and the other side was sticking on the other and the other was sticking on the other. so it was literally ripped apart so imagine living a life ripped apart from your father imagine living a life ripped apart by your father through absence through his abandonment through his death maybe you don't have a father that's alive or through um him being being in the house with you but not actually present to your life present to the things that you found enjoyment in present to tell you that you were beautiful so almost like he was just there but he wasn't really there and funny thing is a lot of us find ourselves dating guys that are in our life but it's so hard to connect with them it's it's almost like we have to prove our love for them and, and we have to pull things out of them like convincing them that I'm worthy to be loved and that's the same thing that happens because it's our template a lot of women have men that just fill a void but they are not really adding to your life so that's how a lot of us are living think about the the ripping of the, those two pieces of paper and how one side of the paper is stuck on this one another one stuck on this one so when your father is not there there are there there are stores in our life that are missing there's things about ourselves that we're not able to understand because that father piece is missing a father is supposed to provide protection he's supposed to provide love discipline guidance reassurance and confirmation so when those things are missing out of our life 
we are left bleeding. We're left bleeding and we find ourselves bleeding all over people um, in ministry, bleeding all over um, our assignments because we're not healed. And a lot of us are walking around with heels, with, with heels, with wounds. We are walking around with wounds and we're bleeding all over the place because we've never healed that wound. And I believe a lot of men um, are able to pick this up in women and they, 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 they found us to be more vulnerable and I can tell her what she wants to hear and I can do anything that I want to do to her um, because it's almost like being bloody and then thrown into a shark a shark tank they smell the blood on you and then they come after you because you're so you're such an easy target because you didn't you're 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 left missing the things that you need to be whole you're you're bleeding out when that's not how we should be When a woman lacks the things that makes her feel better about herself, she is more willing to do things that are against her morals. And that's what happened when we're bleeding and thrown into a shark tank. Um, I think they did a, a survey to some pimps and, and they were like, not all not all women are easy targets. Not all women are um will just do anything to meet her to meet her voids but a lot of women who were not protected a lot of women who were desiring the presence of a man the praise of a man the um protection of a man when we don't have those things in life we go out looking for it and we will give it in exchange for anything if we aren't told who we are, how worthy we are and how valuable we are, we will do things to hear this and Sometimes we will do it at the cost of ourselves. We'll sacrifice ourselves in order to hear these things, in order to feel these things. And that's what I did. I lost myself in a lot of relationships because I just wanted to feel protected. I wanted to feel secure. I wanted to feel validated. I wanted to feel chosen. And it was at the expense of myself because a lot of times I couldn't be myself because I was trying to be somebody else in order to get this man's love, to get this man's attention and get this man's approval. And also we give ourselves in exchange for a little bit of a little bit of protection, of a little bit of security, right? I want to read something to you from my book, Tears of an Orphan Heart. If you have my book, go to chapter 3, page 46. And if you don't have my book, make sure that you go to the comment, not comment section, the description and my book will be linked there so that you can get it for yourself, okay? So when a father is present, he instills a healthy sense of fear in the child or children and sets the tone for the home. Without a father, there is no morality. Think about that. Wherever there is no father, there's no morality. And when we look at our world right now, we are in a huge identity crisis. And it seems as if we have no morality because we're not rooting it back to our source or our father. We are a fatherless generation. We are a fatherless nation. We are a fatherless world. And if we get our father back, we'll get our morality back. And we can most certainly get our world back. Because like I said in the beginning, healing this wound would be the would be the radical social reform, period, okay? So I remember when I snuck a boy into my mother's house, which I believe I would not have done if my father was act active and present. First, I would have respected my father's position and role in the home and my life. Second, I would have understood my value and worth and known that sneak and knowing and known that sneaking a boy into my house for any reason was a violation of what I stood for. There, third, I would be afraid that my dad would take his head off. Lastly, any man worthy of me would have respected my father's role and position in the home and would not have wanted to disrespect my dad by violating his trust and respect or his house. Imagine if, I don't know about you, but I did sneak boys in a house. But if a father was there, you would have never done that. There would just be, would have been a discipline, a correct a correction there or an honor or respect for the house that I wouldn't have snuck a boy in because one I was afraid of my daddy and or I would have been instilled so much by my father that that wasn't my worth I, I it wasn't worth me sneaking a boy in the house and my and what my dad told me about myself and my value and how I was a queen I would not have stooped that low just to have love because I was only doing it to feel love. But if my father was telling me how beautiful I was, how special I was, I wouldn't think that I had to do that to be special, right? To be to feel worthy or to feel loved by the guy. And if my dad was home, 
who was sneaking nobody sneaking no man in the house and your daddy in there right but because of father's love was absent my longing for a male's love led me to look for love in all the wrong places and do stupid things well we look for love in all the wrong places because for me i was looking for it in the relationships i was looking for my relationship to cure to cure a wound that it did not cause we look in all the wrong places because we're looking to men when in actuality we should be looking to our father. The little girl in us is saying, I want a daddy, but the woman in us is translating as I want a man. I want a relationship. I want to feel love. But there's a God-sized hole in us. There's a father-sized hole in us that can only be filled by a father. And we can't get it from a relationship. We can't get our needs met for validation to be chosen, to be to feel loved, to feel protected, to feel secure from a romantic relationship. It has to come from a father. I realized that I had a father wound and this is just my story, but God told me. I was in Chicago. I don't know if you've ever heard my story before, but I was in Chicago laying on the bed. Um, I moved up there for so many of the wrong reasons. Um, and as I was, he told me that I had to come home. And when I got ready to, to to go home, or when he told me I had to go home, I cried. I was so devastated. Not because we were breaking up, but I had given myself again. I have given everything to this guy. I uprooted my entire life, right? And now I had to go home. Now he was sending me back home. And I failed again like it didn't work again after everybody I couldn't prove them wrong because that's what I wanted to do I want to prove that I can get a man to love me I could this could work out like no matter what you're saying this can be something amazing if I can just get him to love me right so I moved to Chicago was up there he told me that I had to come home and as I laid on the bed crying God began to speak to me as a father he wasn't mad at me because I disobeyed him he wasn't mad at me because I was in this place he was like do you want to know why you keep ending up here and I was like God like what's up and he was like because you're expecting every man to be your daddy you have a father wound and I was like a father I had never heard this before never and I was like what is a father wound and um basically it's 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 wanting a relationship to love you in a way that your father would not could not it is having like i said the wound of being ripped apart from your father and not having his presence in your life because we are deficient without a daddy sarah jakes was telling a story one time about a man i think he didn't eat a particular food for i don't know like all his life and he was like i'm good and she was like just because you did not have something that you needed you just adapted to it you survived it but that does not mean that you did not need it and there are deficiencies that has to be supplemented somewhere else so when we don't have a daddy we try to supplement that deficiency somewhere else we try to supplement it with sex we try to supplement it with relationships we try to supplement it by being in codependent relationships let me tell you some things um we try to supplement it by trying to do things and make ourselves feel worthy to make ourselves feel good enough. We try to supplement it, like I said, by codependent relationships. We try to supplement it by giving people more access to us than they deserve. We try to supplement it by not having strong boundaries and thinking that we have to be a doormat in order to give this in exchange for your love. Um, and, 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 and we can't supplement it that way. That's not the way to heal that wound or that's not the way to 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 um yeah to heal the wound that's not the way for us to be whole and that's not the way for us to truly be loved that is not the way that god ever intended us to, for us to be loved so here are six signs of a father wound not feeling un i'm sorry feeling unworthy or not good enough engaging in dominating behaviors oppression shame abuse having low self-esteem and um confidence Needing to achieve success at any cost. A lot of times women are trying to climb the corporate ladder not because of something that they inherently want to do, but it's because I have something to prove to somebody. We compete and we compare because we have something to prove to somebody. One thing that I know for sure and two for certain is we need to get our validation, our acceptance and our love from our father, God. We need to get it from a father and we need to live from the place of already knowing that I'm accepted and love instead of for it. Because if I try to do it for it and I don't get it, I have the wrong perception about myself. Okay. Um, 
fear of abandonment and rejection we can get into this um another day because this video is getting kind of long but i just really want to paint to you what a father wound was but i'm going to tell you of how um fear of abandonment and rejection really affected my life but going back to to um this okay so even jesus needed affirmation the bible um i'll put the the scripture here jesus got affirmation from god when he went to get baptized the sky opened and the dove descended upon his shoulder and this is the voice that they heard from heaven this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased right so there was three things that god said to jesus in that moment you are my son he gave jesus a place of belonging I love you. He gave him acceptance and love. And I'm um, pleased. There was delight in his son, right? And if Jesus got this, how much more do we need it? We were born with a desire to feel significant. We were born with a desire to feel important, to have confirmation for relationship and to be valued. And like I said, when we don't get this, we go out in the world groping for it, desperately needing it and willing to get it at no matter what the cost is. Without a daddy, we will feel unwanted, unloved, unimportant, unlovable, unacceptable, unattractive, and unworthy. These are all the things that are now in our life, all because we cannot see ourselves in a positive life we can't see God in a positive light and we cannot see relationships and other people and other men in a positive light when we are missing the correct lens of a father without a father our lenses are broken and you know how there's like rose colored glasses if the glasses are broken we begin to perceive life through those lens we when our lens are broken we see we 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 have a broken view of family we have a broken view of relationships we have a broken view of of um relationships family of ourselves of god of our relationship with god of other men of authority figures we begin to filter our life we begin to filter our decisions and the things that come from us through these lenses but if we can heal the lens if we can get new lenses and begin to see better through the life of having a father it would change everything literally so how do we heal this wound i'm going to give you two things and then we'll get more into this later but you heal the wound by forgiving your father i forgive you dad for what you were not able to do for me i forgive you dad because of your absence i forgive you dad for not telling me i was beautiful i forgive you like let go forgiveness is letting go let that go so that god can now be the one to be all of those things for you but as long as you're holding your father in prison to give that to you you won't be able to open yourself up to be able to receive it from god I forgive you as saying that I'm no longer requiring it from you, but that God has a man. He has a, a earthly father, a spiritual father, a God father that can give you these things that your earthly father probably did not have the capacity to give you. And we can let our father off the hook so that we can get what we need. And because we're not getting it from him, I don't want it from anybody. That's going to keep you from the life that you want. It's going to keep you from all the things that you desire. So God, Father, I forgive you for not being present. You can write it in a letter. That's what I did. I wrote my father an entire letter. I forgive you for the things that you were not able to give me. I forgive you for what you were not able to give me. In forgiveness, it is the cleansing of those words. It's the cleansing of us because when you're going into surgery, they got to clean you out first. Because the father wound is infectious and if it's not healed, it will begin to spread to every part of your body, affecting everything that is directly or indirectly connected to you. So we got to clean it out and stop it from spreading through forgiveness. And then in that moment, surgery can be done where he will remove the heart of stone, the heart of an orphan, the heart of limited mindsets and belief. He will remove this heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, 
a heart that beats sonship, a heart that beats that he is delighted in me, a heart that beats that I belong. Beloved, you are accepted into the beloved, a heart that beats that I am chosen, a heart that beats that I am validated by God. And if anybody in the world doesn't validate me, doesn't accept me, doesn't love me, it doesn't change the fact that my heart beats that I'm accepted. My heart beats that I'm validated. And embrace God as father. And allow his father, his fatherness to heal us. Allow his fatherness to restore us. Allow his fatherness to heal that soul wound that only he can heal. Allow his fatherness to fill the void in our souls and our hearts that can only be filled by him. Okay? So, this is what a father wound is. And as I try to paint it for you today, you are able to see all of how a father wound affects you. And that is not just something that she has. And it's not just something that he has, but it's something that can that potentially directly affects you. And maybe you didn't know how a father would affect you. And maybe you were thinking, I don't need a father. I'm better without him. These are all protective words that we use in order to stop the hurt, to protect ourselves from wanting somebody who it seems did not want us. You need a father. No matter what society or the world tells us, we need a father. And in order to have a father and experience life with the father, we have to forgive our earthly fathers. And if you can, mend that relationship, reconcile that relationship. But if that's not where God wants to lead you, you still need to forgive and know God as father. For he is the greatest father in the world. And later on, we're going to get into how to grow that relationship with Father God, how to hear from Father God, how to read our word and all of that. But it's the most important relationship in our life. And we have to stop trying to date men and have relationships with these men. And our relationship with God is not right. For he is the foundation. The relationship with him is the foundation for the rest of our lives. So that is the video. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I hope that you heard my heart. And I hope that from this video, you will see the need for a, for a father and do what needs to be done in order to fill your voids with what your soul really needs, which is a dad. Like this video. Share this video. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe to this channel. And make sure you turn on the post notification bell so that you'll be notified every single time I post. And if you feel like I've missed something and I didn't touch on your wound specifically, put it in the comment section below on how the wound showed up in your life. And we can dig more into it so that we can get you a plan to heal it. Because healing this wound is the most greatest thing you can do for your life, for yourself, for your family, for your future. I promise you, it's worth it. Love you guys and I will talk to you soon. Bye!